be inviting His Holiness, Moving Buddha Lin Shun, our lineage guru, to transmit Buddha Dharma teaching. First, homage to the Venerable Mang Liao Ming. Homage to Master Sakya Zeng Kong, the Xiong Lin Homage to the 16th Dhamma King Kamapa. And homage to Master Tukten Daji. Homage to the Three Jewels of the Altar. And homage to the main deity of Homa, Ganapati. Sumo, all Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma lecturers, Dharma assistants, temple directors, all disciples present here and over the webcast. And our guest of honors today, uh, Taiwan government's chief secretary, Mr. Zhang Peifu. And from the Nat National Taiwan University, uh, Science and Technology University from the Business Administration Professor, Mr. Lin. And the KMT party from the Tainan City, uh, the main director, Mr. Tsai. And from the Pingtung Taren Science and Tech University, uh, the assistant professor, Ms. Ye. And a well known TV personality, Mr. Tai Ziyuan. And the executive producer of the Feng Shui Wu Song, Mr. Li. And the producer of the Hubei Star TV, Mr. Lin. And the council of Taichung City, a representative to Mr. Chen Sikai. And the representative to the legislator Cai Qi Chang, Ms. Chen Minghui, and the president of the Lotus Light Charitable Society, Mr. Wu. My university, same classmate, Zhu Jinshui, Sen Ji Fu Ren, Sen Zhe Xiang. Uh, from Taipei City, the president of the PTA Association, Ms. Lee. From the CTI TV, illuminating your heart TV program, Ms. Lebegasu. And the producers for the Platform Sutra and the direct messages of Tantrayana Master Lian Yui and the host, Dharma Sister Beijing. I also see many other guests of honors. Good afternoon. How do you do, everyone? Uh, let me make an announcement. This coming Saturday is Manjusri Bodhisattva. Ceremony, and on Sunday at the Emperor Temple, Lezhang Temple, we would uh, have the Golden Mother's uh, invitation for the wealth deity. 
ceremony. And next week is the ceremony and Dharma transmittance of the wealth attracting goddess. And then next would be the Ragaraja ceremony at the Shangha Lijang Temple. I hope that when you have time, you can attend as much as you can uh, to make offerings of the incense and the gathering here. And the, our gatherings always attended by tens of thousands of people, over tens of thousands of people. And on the first day of the Chinese New Year, Taiwan Lechang Temple uh, prepared 20,000 bread packets, yet it's still not enough. So today, it looked like we have 20,000 participants here. So a few weeks ago, Grandmaster said that I wanted to go to the Sun and Moon Lake. And then on the Chinese New Year Day, I also said that I don't want to go to the Sun and Moon Lake. So there was a disciple that responded. So Grandmaster, does he really want to go to the lake or not go to the lake? We really don't understand, Grandmaster. And then someone said, why don't we just invite him to watch the TV series of the It's like the palace uh, of the, all the queens and concubines in the palace. I didn't know about this, and I heard that this uh, TV program has been uh, on the televisions uh, and broadcast this many times before. I didn't know. So, Grandmaster, Grandmaster's heart, does he really want to go to the Sun and Moon Lake or not? Actually, you really don't understand my heart. So, think about it. To go to the sun and moon lake, the most important thing is who is going with me. This is the point. If I take all of you, the safe heads, and go to the lake, then I would feel uh, tasteless. I'm just joking, of course. Don't take it seriously. So when you go to the best scenic place, and Yosemite National Park, and yet you're by yourself sitting there in the beautiful scenes, and you would feel really uh, pitiful and by the by yourself and feel so alone and so if I really want to go to the lake, the most important thing is who is going with me. So if you know, that's good. I shouldn't talk too much about it, otherwise the more I talk, the more I got into it. There are a lot of people that said, if grandmasters going to the Sun and Moon Lake, they want to f come.
今天呢，我们是修这个红财神的父母。So today we have the red jambala homa fire offering ceremony of Ganapati. He's very famous in India and Tibet. This deity is also a wealth deity in India. Of the resource accumulation path, and also in Tibet, he's very famous. And there was a legend in India that said that uh, he was the son of Shiva, the god of destroyer. When Shiva was uh, traveling for a very long time, so the queen of Shiva, so the king of the Iswara heaven is Shiva, and the queen is Fatwati. So during this travel, the queen gave birth to a very strong and powerful son, and that's Ganapati. So he was the son of Shiva. So when the heavenly beings uh, give birth with the blow, uh, with the breeze, then he would grow to be very big and strong. And Shiva came back from the travel, and Paduati was in the bathroom, or in Japanese, it's called Huroba. She was taking showers. And Ganapati was standing in front of the door, uh, protecting his mother, because uh, she, so that nobody could see her bathing. And Shiva, upon coming back, he saw this very strong and powerful youth standing and uh, guarding Radhwati's bathing. So he thought that the wife was having was in trouble. He did not, Shiva did not recognize his own son. And Shiva, because the god of destroyal, is really very powerful. So with the pull of a sword, uh, he cut off Ganapati's head. And at that time, Hathuvati finished her bath, bath, her bath, and saw that her own son his head has been cut off by his dad. So she told Shiva, No, this is your own son. So Shiva was very sad. And as we know, the three great gods of India, one is the Mahabrahma, the creator, and then Vishnu, the protector. In Taiwan, we often say Wasi, Wasi means gas. So but actually, Vishnu. So, Om Beja Vishnu Ya Soha. That's the protector god. And he is the highest god of the three meditation. 
So in your meditation, when you reach first, second, third level of meditation, the highest one is the Vishnu heaven. So actually, uh, they are the three gods are interacting with each other and they have relationships, but also they they may have some uh, problems too. So the protector god has great dharma power. So he told Shiva. On, on the certain day, on a certain morning, walk on a certain road, and then you see uh, some something, and then uh, and then uh, connect it to or place it at the place of your son's head, and then he would uh, come back to life. So Shiva followed the instruction of Vishnu, and on that day, in the morning, he walked down that road and saw an elephant. So he cut off the elephant's head and then placed it at the son's neck. So this deity, the son of Shiva, Ganapati, or in India, he's called Ganesh. Or in Tibet, he's called Ganapatiya. And Ganesh, they sound similar. Ganesh, Ganapati sound similar. So he became this deity. So he has elephant head and human body. So he's the deity of the resource accumulation practice. So he is a wealth deity, a great wealth deity in India and Tibet, and a very famous one. And the mantra, So reciting his name in his mantra. And the mudra is the mudra of the elephant trunk. Let me form it for you. Let me show you. So the mudra is inward, the fingers are inward, and then straighten your two pinkies that represent the elephant trunk. And then the look, that's the look of Red Jambala. Elephant head with four arms, four arms or six arms or eight arms. And here, there's a statue. With four arms. This is the typical form of Ganesh. One is holding a Vajra axe and another hand is holding a carrot. Carrot. And another hand is holding the leaves of the carrot. And the fourth hand is holding the chanting beads or mala. Just visualize the four arms is good. And on his feet, he stepped on the treasure mouse. The world deities in Tibet, they all have the treasure mouse. Today, we have a very important thing. Then, in making offering to the Red Jambala, 
you offer what he likes? Do you buy carrots? He has carrots on his hand, so you need to make offerings of carrots. I notice. I watch the offerings made. They, they don't seem to be carrots. Oh, but those outside are carrots. Good. And he also likes to eat bananas. You didn't know? Have you ride on elephants in Thailand? What do you feed to the elephants? Bananas. See, I told you, he likes elephants. You didn't believe it. He didn't eat it one by one. It's the whole, uh, the whole um, bunch of the bananas. And then you place it under his trunk, and he would pick it and eat it. So you need to offer what he likes. I've said that for gods, you need to offer what they like. But today you make offerings of alcohol. Then he would become a drunken elephant. He drank so much alcohol, he would run around. But it is possible when he drank too much, he would feel good and a bit, a bit befuddled. And then his elephant trunk would, uh, uh, would shower you with the nectar water. Then all your karmic sicknesses would be gone. Then your body and mind would be pure. And the birth of spirits, purified by this nectar water, can be reborn in the pure Buddha lands. And most importantly, what he spits out is golden bars, gold bars. And about maintaining values, is it good to have lands or houses or gold or diamonds or precious jewels, precious gems? <laughs> All are good. <laughs> okay, I'll give you all. <laughs> oh, great. great. Uh, once I have uh, talked about the practice procedure of Ganapati. It's very important in order for him to spit out precious items, you take the Vajra scepter that you often use for your practice, that uh, when you practice well, you visualize the Vajra scepter on top of his head and then you pray to him, then he would fulfill, you, he would answer your prayer. This is a tip and so visualize the Vajra scepter on top of his head. And at that time, you pray to him. And he would answer your prayer. And the second tip, you need to rub um, fondle his elephant trunk. You recite the mantra three times, and then you uh, touch it, rub it three times, and recite the mantras, and then pray to him, and then he would answer your prayer. So this deity is the wealth deity, and there are two tips. 
if you want him to bestow uh, success or attainments, then he would uh, give you that. Someone wanted to uh, go to work for a company and interviewed several times and failed. And then he followed my method and then rubbed the Ganapati's trunk and then he got into the company. And he uh, friends in the company and then he, he took a test uh, to interview to the company and he was uh, admitted. So Ganapati also has practice for love and harmony. His trunk is, could be very long to the front or to the left or to the right or when he turned back to the back he could uh, he could uh, turn and going round that uh, any lady that you really like you use the elephant trunk to uh, to hook her and take her to to you. Then I would perform the wedding blessing. So that's the love and harmony practice. So the single man and single woman, you can visualize the elephant trunk of Ganapati to extend whether in the United States, Japan, Malaysia, Indonesia, Russia, or even further to Russia, to Europe, anywhere, you visualize your girlfriend and then use the elephant trunk and then uh, and then bring her to to you mm. so and it would happen so he's the deity for both wealth and also love and relationship. So there are great benefits in practicing this deity. So that's uh, how he came about. And he was the son of Shiva. He had great Dharma power. And after practice, when you have enough resources, you can perform charity and be philanthropic, and then you have enough resources for your spiritual cultivation and so that you can focus on your spiritual cultivation without worries. So we made lots of offerings of wine to him earlier. There's this joke. Drinking milk uh, can make one strong. But after drinking five big glasses of milk, and when you try to push the wall, the wall stays there. But if you take five glasses of vodka, it's an alcoholic beverage from Russia. Or you drink hard liquor. Typically, we call uh, that with a lower alcoholic content wine. Or with higher alcoholic content, we call it liquor. 
So if you take five big glasses of, of big bottles of liquor, you would become so strong, you don't even have to push the wall, the wall would fall by itself. So just now, we let the red Jambala drink lots of wine, so he would have great power, very strong. So whatever we pray for, uh, he would be uh, fast and then would give it to us. But don't ask for the wrong thing because that would be problematic sometimes. There was a man that used a cell phone to take a picture of a girl. And the girl said, what are you doing taking a picture of me? Are you courting me? And then the man said, no, no, I'm not courting you. I... I can uh, post it in my dorm, and then it would chase away the chase away the ghost. So don't chase after the wrong one. So Kanapatiya is the uh, deity for wealth as well as for love and relationship. Now let's talk about. Today we will talk about chapter 38, the body altar or mandala of Hevajra. Let me read this. <coughs> Practicing Hevajra body altar mandala has two great benefits. First, the protectioner can do the self protection. And second, the practitioner can attain spiritual response with Hevajra. So you can do the protection, and protection is very important. From my personal experience, it is best for a practitioner to practice by himself in seclusion without letting others know. After he gains great fruition or attainments, then he can come out to deliver all beings and spread Buddha Dharma. However, as he gains fame, the greater the fame, the more the criticism and slanders will be. This is due to envies and jealousies of other fellow practitioners, as it is human nature to compare. So that's how it is. Before attaining the supreme way, one's heart has not opened wide, and one does not comprehend the wisdom of equality, and does not comprehend the empty flower or the moon on water. Therefore, they employ methods of the ghosts, of the ghosts and gods to secretly inflict harms. And some do openly and some do secretly. So at the end, any practitioner, in order to protect himself from others' harms, needs to do the self-protection. And the key point here is the self-protection. In the beginning of my Buddhist path, I practice uh, with Golden Mother and gain spiritual response. And at that time, I felt that I was number one between heaven and earth. Actually, there is no number one under the heavens because there is always someone else better. That's the Chinese proverb. That never call yourself number one. But at that time, I was young and uh, exuberant. So I thought I was number one under heavens and I'm not afraid of anyone. And that's why I made public my birth date and time. The Taiwanese calendar, the year 34, 
the lunar calendar, the fifth month, the 18th day, and the noon time. I wrote it on my book, and I welcome all the black magics and the spells and curses. So that's a very exuberant act. It's very few that people make public their own birth uh, date and time. That's very dangerous. Those who really understand about black spells, they would take that numbers and your symbols, things that grandmasters had walked on, like the sandy areas, and someone saw that you step on the sands, then they would take that sand or the dirt, that symbols, that's the symbol of you. So those who are uh, great at bad spells could do that. And those grains of sands are good enough. As, and moreover, about hairs. <laughs> I'm a monk, so I don't have much hair, so I have to cut here and here on from my chest, hair chest, if I do have hair on my chest. And also inside my nostrils. And <laughs> something I cannot say, too embarrassed to say. So I've given all my hair. So hair that grow on your body, this is something that could be used to test for a DNA test. It's a symbol from your body. So if they get that thing, they could... Uh, perform black magic on you. So if he got these items, but for Grandmaster, I cut off all my hair and give to my disciples. A lot of my disciples have all this saviras, hair saviras of me. Your nails, that uh, symbolize or represent your energy or your spirit, hair and nails. So have I suffered from black magics? Yes, I have, and lots of them. Recently, too. So I'm giving them a teaching here, and they're watching the webcast. And they take the needles and they stab on your eyes. And I had to practice 43 days to cure my eyes. Otherwise, it kept tearing. And I felt like as if I was going blind. When I went to Toronto, did it happen? Yes. <laughs> I was limping going there. The day before I went to Toronto, uh, they didn't want me to get uh, to give them a teaching. They used two nails and to uh, nail it on my two knees two big nails onto my two knees. Who followed me to Toronto? Now when I climbed the stairs, so it's not one feet on one step, but two feet on one step at a time. And one, another one. It's not like one foot, one step, but two, one step and two foot. So I had to endure there. When I give them a teaching in Toronto, I said, Vajra Kilaya, the Vajra Purva, after 
giving this Dhamma teaching, my legs immediately cured. And then after the Dhamma teaching, they weren't cured. And then I went back to the hotel. Master Lian Ning is not here because uh, otherwise he would uh, confirm. His nephew was uh, uh, a doctor or someone specialized in physical therapy. So the physical therapist was a nephew of Master Lian Ning and now he's in Brunei. He's in Brunei celebrating New Year there and also having a ceremony there in Brunei. So his nephew, the son of his sister, came to uh, take a look at my legs and then he said, uh, if I hold it tight, it's because the tendons uh, was hurting. So he used a bandage to tie and to move the tendon so the tendon does not move. So when the tendon does not move, it doesn't hurt. And when the inf inflammation subsided, the pain is gone. So if you know about physical therapy, then you know then you uh, hold it with bandage, that tendon, so it doesn't move. And then the inflammation would subside. And then after the bandage was wrapped around my knees, it uh, was cured immediately. Don't just think that it is only Vajrakilaya that cured me. Of course, it is also Vajrakilaya that cured me. Someone believed in God, and he uh, read the Bibles, and he has faith in God. And then he was in the ocean, and he was drowning, and then someone was uh, on a on a raft and said, you know, let me help you. And he said, no, I don't want you to help me. I want God to help me. And then there was another fishing boat and the fisherman said, let me help you. And he said, no, I don't want you to help me. I want God to help me. I know God will save me. And then there was a, a ship uh, passing by and then seeing him uh, floating in the ocean, said, let me save you. And he said, no, no, I don't want it. Say, God will save me. And finally he died, and he said, God, why didn't you help me? You let me die. And God said, of course, I sent that raft, the fisherman boat, and the ship to save you, but you didn't want to get on board. So how else could I help you? So today, Vajakilikilaya, Vajakilaya, Purba Dorji, sent the nephew of Master Lin Ning to cure my legs, and then my legs were cured. You know, the black spells are really bad. So, by practicing the body mandala practice of Hevajra, you can protect yourself. In Malaysia, I went to Penang. I stayed at the Mutiara Asa or Pearl Asa Hotel, and then I smelled. Mm. There smells of ghosts, some problem here. So I have to do self-protection. It's not that it's not okay just to have strong body. 
and I, as I laid on bed that night, I recited long to ignite the fire and burn your whole body to become ash. Young, the wind blows to blow all the ashes away. Kang, and then uh, Vajra Scepter, you become Vajra Scepter laying on bed. There were five ghosts with big heads, with uh, sharp teeth. And they saw Sang Yen Lu was on bed, sleeping. Oh, this is a rare chance. Let's bite on him so that he couldn't conduct the ceremony and couldn't get on the Dharma seat. And they bite, they bit, and the Vajra scepter did not break, but their teeth broke. So, Grandmaster has encountered lots of black magics and curses and spells. And, and very bad spells. And to uh, fry you in oil, in hot oil, and uh, and use nails to nail on you and then throw you in the frying oil and the whole body is fire, it's very hot. And then the whole, the blanket at night uh, in my sleep was wet and I couldn't sleep at night. I pray to Ganapati and please come here in front of me and then spray the nectar water and the fire is gone. And then uh, after that, I slept really well. As soon as I closed my eyes, I didn't even have any dream. And when I opened my eyes, it's uh, it's light, and I am I became energetic. So we all have to do the practice of the body mandala. In the past, I have taught the Kuan Yin body altar practice or body mandala practice. You have to do that or the body mandala of the yidam and also to do the armor protection prior to sleep and then you do the protection of the bed. One time, I did the protection for the bed. The bed became a white lotus blossom and I was laying in at the center of the lotus, sleeping. But my feet uh, was outside the lotus blossom. And then the lotus, and then around the lotus is water is in the lake. But uh, the feet is a bit outside the bed because I sleep sideways, that's It's a joke. But you know the black magic is very incredible. And you know, this year is the year of the snake and the water snake, the year of the water snake, and the water snake bit on my feet. Oh, it's painful. What the black magic could become water snake? And I pull my feet in, and then the lotus enclosed. 
And so the open lotus became a like a bud, and I slept inside the lotus, and they couldn't come in. So you also have to do protection uh, on your bed to transform the bed to become lotus, and you sleep at the center of it. This is very important. That's a kind of protection practice. And then there's another one. The color chakra shield is very important, very useful, and place it at the four corners of your bedroom. Decide color chakra mantra. Recite Kala Chakra Mantra seven times and then place the Kala Chakra shields at the four corners of your bedroom and nothing could come in. Nothing will be able to come in. This is also a good way. If you don't want them to come into your house, they will not be able to enter into your house. There was a woman that has been married, every time she's pregnant, she would hear a voice. I want to eat your child. The Tripudia disciple, there was a voice that's telling her uh, that I want to eat your child, and then she would have a miscarriage, and then she's pregnant for the second time, and it happened again. I want to eat your child. And not long after, she had another miscarriage, and she came to find me, and I taught her to place at the four corners the color chakra shields. Or Vajra Kilaya, the Purba. Place it at the four corners of your bedroom or of your house. If you place Kala Chakra shield, you recite this mantra as much as you can. The, be the more, the better. Or Vajra Kilaya. Vajakilaya Mantra. Recite and place the Purba. So if you place the Vajakilaya Purba, you recite Vajakilaya Mantra. Or if you place Kala Chakra Shield, you recite Kala Chakra Mantra. So after she placed those, she got pregnant again and there was no voice, no more. Now she had the baby. And both mother and child are safe. That's why protection is very important. Don't think because you're great, you're number one, and there's no enemies. Because the black magic that was cursed on me was done by the uh, greatest black magician of Malaysia. But today I can sit here on the Dharma teaching seat very happy giving Dharma teaching because I do self-protection. I do the protection. My Yidam will also protect me. As soon as I join my palms and with the snap of the finger, the Yidam, the deity, would descend. Any deity that you visualize and recite the mantra, the deity would come. 
So today, I cannot say that I'm not afraid of the black magician because it's problematic, you know, to have tears flowing from your eyes continually and f tearing all night. That's also very uncomfortable. So it is best for each of you to do self-protection. But, you know, the shamans, the black magicians like someone like Grandmaster. <laughs> and they may not like you, right? Because you're not, you know, don't say that I have great names. I just have a little bit of name. Uh, maybe Thai. Uh, the brother Thai has uh, bigger fame. So, those with uh, fame uh, decide hiking Kuen Sutra as much as you can more because there is a statement in the hiking Kuen Sutra that it can eradicate uh, the sufferings of life and death and eradicate all harms and poisons so including of course uh, the uh, spells curses and black magic so if you are uh, suffering from the spells and curses, recite Haikin Kuan Yin Sutra uh, more, and then you can eradicate the spells. So there's this joke. Or oh, about uh, delivery? Someone went to the hospital, oh, about, and then uh, the doctor said, you have to have your uh, urine and faces attested. And then, and then he came back to the doctor and said, oh, <laughs> it's a play of Chinese words. The patient said, I've taken my urine, but I have not taken my poo. I couldn't. You know, the black magic uh, could let you have skin disease. Uh, they would create uh, like a... Uh, uh, like a scarce girl of you, and then... Uh, uh, draw a picture of you and then put your dress and then they would uh, pour a uh, dirty stuff, foul stuff, maybe poo and pee on that. Then you would uh, suffer from skin disease, all different kinds. That uh, doesn't matter what you do, you cannot cure it. So you need to use the power of Buddha Dharma to protect yourself. Then you can eradicate the uh, skin diseases. This is also very important. It's not just by drinking your urine, it's good enough. That's good. But you cannot eat your poo. Because yen in Chinese means a test as well as swallow. Uh, there was a student in the Bible school uh, listening to the teacher talking about the Bible and talking about the big flood uh, where all the, uh, be the living beings died. And then the student asked the teacher, so all the plants died? And the teacher, yes, are you sure? Yes. How about fish? And then the teacher said, why don't you, well, 
Just get out. Grandmaster is the one who just uh, who doesn't die from all the curses and spells of the black magicians. Religions about faith, so you need to be careful. Someone asked for my underwear that I have worn for a very long time, and I didn't know what they want that for, so I give, but I give it to them anyway. Someone else has also worn my underwear, and I gave it to him. But you know, that's the symbol of your spirit. If you cut a small piece and you do black magic on it, then I would suffer. But I've given a lot of my undershirts to a lot of people. I haven't given my underpants, though. I don't know why people just want my undershirts and not my underpants. Actually, I have lots of underpants that have been worn to and torn. So what's the difference between undershirts and underpants? So you have to have the wisdom of equality. So the greater the fame, the more the slanders. That's because the other of spiritual cultivators uh, can get jealous. So it is a human nature for ordinary people to compare, especially these black magicians. They like to compare. So the more fame you have, they want to test their capabilities. So like that day, they wonder, Grandmaster, can Grandmaster get on the Dharma teaching seat? He, the one requested the black magician, could you make Grandmaster unable to go to the ceremony and give Dharma teaching in Toronto? So, and the black magician said, of course, and certainly did so. I was uh, limping and and dragging my legs, climbing onto the Dharma seat, but after the ceremony, I walked fine. So they wanted to compete and compete the Dharma powers. So mundane people likes to do that. So that's how it is. Uh, because my cultivation is ultimate and your cultivation is not. How would you know? The lineage root guru of Tantrayana, you cannot judge his attainment, whether it is ultimate or not. You cannot judge that toward your own lineage root guru. If you do so, then you violate the precepts. You breach the precepts. You cannot, you're not allowed uh, to judge or to test the Dharma power of your lineage root guru or whether it is uh, the ultimate or not because if you do judge then you would never reach uh, that the attainments of the ultimate or the enlightenment because this is about faith. You have to have 100% faith in your lineage root guru. So this is called the pure faith. Otherwise, uh, you would start uh, uh, finding faults with your lineage root guru. If you find your lineage root guru and he is uh, cleaning his nostrils, oh, how could a lineage root guru do that? Or that? <laughs> How could he have Atlas feet? That's also a kind of issue, right? 
what kind of uh, diseases would Guru have? There was a disciple in front, next, uh, in front, in front of me, and we were having dinner, and I took two pills, and that disciple stood up and said, Grandmaster, you take medicine? How could you take medicine? You cannot take medicines. Why not? I said. Why? Why did you take medicine? Your lineage would go. How? You, you're strong. Your body is. Actually, the lineage would go is also a human being. You cannot treat him like the Buddha sitting behind me. They don't need to take medicine. <laughs> they don't need to take medicines. They're very stable and looking at beings, and they never have to take medicines. But I'm not like that yet. Of course, that, that one back there, they don't need to take medicines, but the one in front here still need to take medicines. Don't, don't think I'm a Buddha, but hey, yes, you, you think of me as a Buddha, but the Buddha still have the physical body, and if there's uh, some problems or ailments, he still have to take medicines. Uh, you cannot undermine me because I take medicines. Oh no, my lineage should go to take medicines. It scared me. I didn't blame her because she was quite beautiful. Really, I didn't want to scold her, because, but if she's ugly, I scold her already. I would have scolded her. So one who has not attained the supreme way, their hearts have not opened wide, and they do not comprehend the wisdom of equality, and do not comprehend the empty flower or the moon on water. They Therefore they employ the methods of the ghosts and gods to secretly inflict harms. So remember, the higher uh, realm you reach in your spiritual cultivation, the demonic obstructions uh, are getting greater. So at that time, the Ganapati also obstructs spiritual cultivation, cultivators. So, Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, because she recognized he had great power, uh, she transformed herself to become a beauty. And then he wanted to marry her, and she said, yeah, but with one condition. What condition? That you have to eternally uh, support the Buddha Dharma. Only then I would marry you. And, and he's... And he agrees, he's because uh, that the joy, that the joy, um, the em em emitting the joy of heaven. So he finally supported the Buddha Dharma. So he's from the heaven of that uh, emitting joy. So. It's easy to counter the open harms, but some are done in secret. That's harder to handle. So even when the practitioner has high attainments, you still have to do self-protection. That's all for today.